Today I am canning peppers. I brought you to my greenhouse so you can see what I've been doing during the summer. So I'm canning peppers but just not any kind of peppers. I'm canning mini bell peppers. So these are all mini bell peppers. The only thing is that I'm struggling because they're not turning ripe as fast as I'd like so I want them to turn red but some are already red but not as much as I'd like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to can what I have. First, I'm going to start by picking the few that I do have here that I see are red, and then we'll move this back inside the kitchen. Back inside the house with all my peppers. Now, don't mind what's going on top of my stove. I'm also canning some salsa today. Busy canning day. So you might be wondering, why would you bother canning these tiny little mini peppers? First of all, it's the same technique. If you would have an abundance of peppers, you could use this exact same technique to can your peppers and to preserve what you have too much. But that's not the goal that I have today. I specifically planted this with one goal in mind, is to try to reproduce this. I don't know if you've ever had these. They're so good. They're stuffed sweet bell peppers, but they're stuffed with a soft cheese. Of course, it doesn't say what kind of soft cheese or what's really in it. And it's preserved with, I think it's like a grape seed oil or, or whatnot. You eat this, you know, on a charcuterie board, crackers, whatever. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's so good. So this tiny little 250 gram, 250 gram bottle is $20 on Amazon. And here in the stores in Canada, you can't find these anywhere. So my goal is to try to see if I can reproduce these. But before I can even reproduce, I need to preserve these peppers and preserving them will make them softer for me to be able to stuff them. That is my goal. Sorry if you weren't interested in it, but that's why I'm doing it. So now moving on to preparing these peppers to be stuffed. So as you can see, I've got a variety of different colors. Some weren't quite ripe, some are getting there. Some are green, some are red, some are somewhere in between. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to core these, well, wash them, of course, core them, and then uh, I need to blanch them for three minutes. So blanching, what it does is you put your, your peppers in a pot of boiling water, you leave them there for two to three minutes, cool them down really quick in an ice bath. This kind of stops the enzymes inside of the, the vegetable, the fruit. It preserves a better quality of your product. So we need to do that with all of this and then we can can them. Not that much to do, but just a little, just a few steps. So let's get going. years later. Well, that was an interesting way to spend 45 minutes coring these peppers. Not so bad, but it was a little time consuming. So now let's get these in the water and blanch them for three minutes. Let's get these peppers in the jars. We're gonna place the peppers in the jars, but really loosely, and I'm using these half pint jars. So we're not gonna be able to fit a whole lot. So I'm just gonna put them down in there, really. I don't wanna crush them, so just kinda fit them in as I can. Perfect. 
Through these jars, we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt. This is pickling salt. You're always using pickling salt. And you're going to backfill your jars with hot water, boiling water as usual. Hot jars, hot water, leaving one inch headspace. Remove any air bubbles that might be inside your jar. Wipe the rims of your jars with water. New clean caps. And we're going to put our rings on fingertip tight. Transfer these over to the canner. Once your jars are in the canner, we're going to increase the heat. Place your cover on, make sure everything's working properly. And seal your lid. And now we let this come up to heat. We need to bring this up to 11 pounds of pressure for my altitude. Be sure to know the altitude that you live in if you ever do some canning because you do need to adjust your your pressure and your time uh, depending on your altitude this will need to process for 35 minutes so we increase the heat we bring this to a hard boil we vent our pot for 10 minutes once that's done we place the weighted gauge on top of the pot, bring it to 11 pounds of pressure, and then start timing. We need to time this for 35 minutes, process it for 35 minutes, and then when it's done, we turn it off and we kind of reverse all the process. So let's get going. Usually when the time is up, I turn off the heat and then I move my pot to a burner that's not warm, but since my stove is a little occupied with my salsa, I'm just going to leave it there. It'll cool off. It'll probably take a little bit more time. So now we just need to leave our pot to depressurize for as long as it takes. The button just dropped, this button right here. So now, and the dial is at zero, so now I can remove the gauge and we have to wait another 10 minutes before we can open the cover. 10 minutes are up. I'm gonna remove the cover. Be sure to flip the cover away from your face because there's still a lot of steam in there. Now I'm just gonna let this sit for another five minutes in the canner before taking them out. We're almost there.
I think those peppers look perfect. I know this isn't my final project. This is not the goal of making these peppers, but I'm going to let them for a while. I'm going to let them be for a while. I, it's really busy right now. Salsa, tomatoes, lots of things going on. So I will try in the next little while to make like a part two of this video and to show you if I can come up with a delicious recipe for the cheese filling and showing like the final product of those cheese stuffed peppers. If you know of a delicious recipe to stuff these peppers with, please put them in the comments below. So as usual, we leave our jars untouched for 12 to 24 hours with the covers on, the, the rings on. Once that time is up, remove your rings. Don't store them with your rings on top. You're not supposed to. Store them in a cool, dry, dark environment. If you do, they can be good for up to a year, maybe even a little bit longer. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy my content. If you do, don't be shy. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and be sure to check back again soon to see what other things I have going on.